Det var. Det har landet. Det har landet. Nu kommer den klump som nå. Nå kommer den klump. Her kommer der den blonde der, der er hun, Det er den ja. Ja, Det var liksom ikke tvil. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you again. Hi, I'm Sis from the Norwegian Book Program. Ja. Riley må hasta gåre til sine første møter med norsk presse og bokhandlere. Men vi treffes igjen litt senere. Så jeg tok deg til denne litterære plassen, hvor Ibsen gikk til å komme ned hver morgen og ha sin breakfast på The Grand Café. Lotte, hva er det som sier? Det er noe om hvordan illusjoner er lett å gjøre inn. Well, that's very built. true. Yeah. <laughs> Life is an illusion. Lufthavn means castle of air. Right. So it's something you can. Og man skal ikke se bort fra at Lucinda Riley har lært lidt af Ibsens teknik. For også hos henne kommer hemmeligheder fra fortiden til at påvirke livene til menneskene i nåtiden i dramatisk grad. So you, you said this was sort of an English place. If two of your characters were here. What would they be doing or discussing? Or? Drinking tea. <laughs> they would be drinking tea, yeah. <laughs> and they would be talking about love or secrets in the past <laughs> or something like that. Yes, yeah, so you could tell because they'd be leaning very close together. Yes. And, uh, yeah, sort of staring into each other's eyes. How did you start writing Hot House Flower? Well, I was actually, I was sitting on a balcony in uh, the Oriental Hotel, which, as you know, is in the book. And I just had a an enormous argument with my husband and it was about five o'clock in the morning so I was sulking outside and I knew that I wanted to write a story and I could feel that there was something burning and bubbling inside me and I just picked up a book and I started reading about orchids and I I was struck by the fact that the orchid has traveled for the last 200 years and now grows all over the world. I mean, it grows, they grow in my house, which is uh, in Norfolk, a similar house to Wharton Park. And it, they, they live in these incredibly cold um, environments. And I just thought as a motif, how lovely that would be to pull the whole past and present together. And it was that that began the story. Um, you'll be pleased to know I did make up with my husband about an hour later. I was so thrilled that <laughs> I'd, I decided what I wanted to write. You know, I think I need your help to tell the plot of the story quickly. Is that possible? No. <laughs> so much happens in, the, in this book. Oh, it's, I mean, it's, yes, it's a big story. Kanskje ikke så rart at ikke engang forfatteren orker å gi en oppsummering av denne handlingsmettede romanen. Men det er ingen tvil om at hun har et stødig grep om de mange handlingstrådene. De utspenner seg i Provence, England og Thailand, i våre dager og under andre verdenskrig, og omfatter både herskap og tjenere. Og det hele starter med funnet av en gammel dagbok som bringer fortiden inn i nåtiden. Jeg har funnet noe som du og familien din sikkert er interessert i. Kit pekte på pakken han hadde i fanget. Hva er det? Julia fulgte med mens han pakket forsiktig ut en liten bok med skinnpermer. Han viftet med den i luften. Det er en dagbok som begynner i 1941 om livet som krigsfange i Changi. Vet du om bestefaren din var krigsfange der? Bestefar Bill snakket mye om Østen, men mest om de vakre blomstene som vokste der. Julia smilte. Han nevnte aldri Changi. Han ville nok ikke fortelle et barn om det, men med tanke på hva du nettopp sa, tror jeg det er svært sannsynlig at dagboken er hans. How do you juggle everything around without losing the oversight of just the plot in itself? I, do, I honestly don't know. I mean, this is a woman who can... Um, forget many things that are normal domestic stuff but I don't forget what is happening in the plots and I don't ever write it down I have a small notebook where if I suddenly think of something but I will start the book 
and I record it on a tape recorder because I have a very bad problem in my shoulder from RSI, so I can't sit on a computer the whole day. And also I like walking about. I'm an ex-dancer, so I like, I hate being uh, yeah. tied to one place. So I begin the process and normally the starting point is actually the location that's inspired me rather than um, a particular character or a, a plot. And often I, I don't really know where I'm going to end up and I feel sometimes as though I'm on as much of a journey as the reader. Do you? Because I imagined your office with like nope. a thousand post-it notes saying, no, no, no. you know. No, I have a no. little tiny notebook and sometimes, I mean, what I like to do if I can, and it is actually the only way that I can write, is to go somewhere completely alone because I've got so many children and my house is so How noisy. Many? Well, I've got seven altogether, but four <laughs> who are mine. Yeah. And so my house is never quiet. And also if the children come in, even if there's somebody else there, taking care of them, I have to see them. So what I tend to do is actually go off to somewhere, Thailand or France or whole up anywhere, I don't really care where it is, all alone and I go into Perda and I just write and write and write and write and I get the story down on the tapes and, and I come home and I, I think it really helps the momentum as well because... But when you say write you mean... Dictate. Yes, I mean I call yeah. it right, but actually yeah. it's 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 me being very sad and looking very stupid uh, <laughs> with a tape recorder, and you know my kids just uh, laugh at me because they'll knock at the door and they'll say, "Mummy, comma, can we come in?" <laughs> Question mark. Oh, uh, you dictate yes. like that. <laughs> So they're very glad when the tape recorder goes and then the um, typing comes back and then we're into the next process. But the, the first process, and I think this whole thing about how do I keep the plot in my head, it obviously helps if I'm there 24 hours a day. And I also, it, it's the story that comes first for me and I have to get that down and I have to continue it. I have to, the best way for me to, to write is to literally think it and live it 24 hours a day. And a couple of them now has huge expectations for this book. Do you feel the pressure? <laughs> I'm starting to. <laughs> I'm starting to. Yes, I am. I mean, I, as I say, I'm just absolutely thrilled that the book has done as well as it's done so far. Um, Are you fit for fight to, to go in there and take the lead from Kate Morton on the bestseller lists? Well, I'm quite happy to be compared to Kate, that's great. And do you compare because you're both writing in the same category? I think the thing that makes Kate and I similar is the fact that we're both writing what is literary, it's called commercial literary fiction. So it is not commercial as in chick -led. Um It's obviously more literary and, and um, has more depth than the chick lit style books. Um, but it's actually quite, it's quite a small and difficult seam um, to operate in, to write a page-turning, well-written story. And that's what I aspire to do, really. Efter intervjuet vårt og enda et par til blir det arrangert fest for Riley. Her er bokhandlerne invitert, for faller de for boka kan mye være gjort. Blir det store innrykk da? Det får vi håpe. Jeg regner med at det kommer 40. Så forskjellige bokhandlere og ja, folk fra forlag og alle som er liksom interessert i boka hennes. Så vi får se. Og Rosévin, hun elsker jo Rosévin! Har du tro på den? Veldig. Ja, hvorfor det? Nei, for den hadde jo alt. Uh, jeg er anglofi. Elsker England, og dette var jo som en BBC-produksjon ja. uh, i bokform. Uh, og du hadde nåtid og bakover i historien, du hadde drama, du hadde kjærlighet, du hadde svikt. Altså, det, det var, ja, hele pakken. 
Så du kommer til å se anbefale den nå da? Jeg har gjort det allerede. Å ja, tenker det? Lenge før den kom ut. Ja, ja, det er folk som har kjøpt andre bøker. Så sier jeg, ja, hvis du liker den, så må du også ta med Lucinda Riley når den kommer. Ja. Ja, så ja da. Og jeg skal lese den igjen. Nå kommer de. Nå kommer de. Nå kommer de. Hello, welcome. Nice to meet you. Come on inside. Yeah. Hi, you look wonderful. You look like a summer girl. Well, it is. The sun is shining. Did you tell you the news? No. I just heard I'm number one in Germany. Number one in Germany? Oh my God, we should have champagne. Skål til number one in Germany. To my very first number one. First you take Germany, then you take Norway. Yes, I slowly conquer the world. Yeah.